This Elden Ring series covers how to do all quests and missable content in order so that all choices and rewards will be available. For best results, follow this series from the start of part 1. There will be spoilers in the form of important information, and as usual, useful timestamps can be found in the video description. At the end of part 4, we had just completed multiple quests and NPC storylines, including those for Ronnie, Blythe, E.G., Selen, Jaren, and Bok. In part 5, we aim to wrap up all major quests and quest steps before heading into the mountaintops of the giants. We'll start at Volcano Manor. I want to take a moment to give a major warning, avoid defeating Rykard, who is the final boss of Volcano Manor at all costs. Defeating Rykard will lock you out of all Volcano Manor related quests that haven't been completed beforehand. Now to start, and this is a trivial matter, but there is a ghost NPC at the end of the hallway that leads to the west. It doesn't matter if you speak with this NPC or not, it will just provide some interesting context to the story of Volcano Manor. I believe this ghost disappears sometime after eliminating the first Volcano Manor target. Before speaking with Tanith, you can head upstairs to face off with the Inquisitor Giza invader. She drops the Giza's wheel weapon when defeated. Next, speak with Tanith and agree to join the Volcano Manor. Despite the vibe of the manor, joining them will not have any negative impact elsewhere in the game. Head down the hallway and enter the drawing room, take a moment to greet the NPCs in the room, Raya, Bernal, and Dialos. Following that, pick up the Recusant's finger and the first letter from Volcano Manor. It specifies the first target, Old Knight Istvan, and marks his location on the map, which is north of Warmaster's Shack. It's the same location where we fought Recusant Henricus way back in part 1 of this guide series. Go there, find the red summoning sign, and invade. The reward for defeating Istvan is the scaled armor set. You can then report your success back to Tanith to receive the Magma Shot Sorcery. Reload the game, and you'll find Raya in a new room. It's down the hall through the second door on your right. Here, you'll find Raya in her true form as Zorias, a Serpentborn. Speak through all of her dialogue to progress her quest. Afterwards, you can speak with Tanith to get some additional new dialogue if you want. You should also be able to purchase new Ashes of War from Bernal. Assassin's Gambit is particularly useful as it will make you semi-invisible and completely silent for about 30 seconds after use. I put the skill on a light dagger that doesn't affect my equip load by much, and switch to it whenever I need to pass through an area unnoticed. Be sure to speak with Patches and get a target request from him for the Great Horned Tragoth. Fast travel to the Magma Worm Makar Arena. Near the site of Grace, you'll find a red summoning sign to invade Tragoth's world. The Bull Goat armor set is the reward for defeating the Great Horn Tragoth, and afterwards you can return to Patches and inform him about your success. Reload the game and speak with Patches again to get an additional reward, the Magma Whip Candlestick. Next, retrieve the second letter from Volcano Manor if you haven't already done so. It names the next target for elimination, Riley the Idol, and marks his location on the map. The easiest way to reach this target is by traveling north from the Ur Tree Gazing Hill up through the ravine. Find the red summoning sign on the ground and invade. The defeat of Riley is rewarded with the Crepus's Vile Talisman. We'll get an additional reward from Tanith in short order. For now though, continue moving north towards the Shaded Castle. Enter near a break in the wall and discover the Site of Grace at the Shaded Castle ramparts. Before going through the Shaded Castle, you can find a hostile NPC to the west of the castle. She goes by the name of Malay Marai, and when defeated, she drops the Ant Spur Rapier along with the Marai Mask and Rope. Now we're ready to head through the Shaded Castle. Our first stop will be at the northwest corner, where we can get the Valkyrie's Prosthesis, which is necessary for Millicent's quest. Double back a short distance before hopping across rooftops to the north to reach the inner gate site of Grace.
From there, it gets a little more dangerous as we make our way to the Castle Lens Hall. While we don't necessarily need to go there right now, we will eventually need to go back there to meet with Patches. For now, we will still be getting a legendary armament out of this effort. You'll need to defeat Elmer of the Briar before the Sight of Grace will appear for this location. Fortunately, he isn't too tough compared to some of the other bosses we've already fought. When defeated, Elmer will drop the Briar Great Shield and Mirai Executioner Greatsword, which is one of the legendary armaments. Discover the new Sight of Grace, then report back to Tanith about the elimination of the second Volcano Manor target. You'll receive the Serpent Bone Blade as a reward, and Tanith will also let you in on the secrets of Volcano Manor. Reload the game by resting at the Sight of Grace, then go to the drawing room. If you speak with Dialos now, he will express a lot of doubt and self-pity. After going through all of his dialogue, Dialos will leave the manor once you pick up the red letter, which is effectively the third letter from Volcano Manor. Speak with Bernal to get the letter to Bernal, which marks a target for elimination, Vargrim the Raging Wolf, on the map. He is located in Langdell, which we will get to soon enough. You should find Raya in the same spot as last time, but she will now be in her human form. Speak through all of her dialogue before moving on. Open the door to the room that is to the right of the room that Raya is in. There is a false wall near a perfume bottle that will fade when you run up against it and press the dodge roll button. Make your way southwest through it to reach the prison town church site of grace. In order to advance Raya's quest, you will need to open the pair of doors at the far side of the church and step out into the underbelly of Volcano Manor. You can then speak with Raya and tell her of the dark side of Volcano Manor. Afterwards, if you want, you can speak with Tanith about Zarias's troubles for some new dialogue, then return to the prison town church. To progress Raya's quest, we will need the Serpent's Amnion, which requires us to make our way through Volcano Manor's underbelly. Our first destination is the Guest Hall. From the guest hall, venture down and through the lava, then take a lift up towards the Temple of Eagle. Before entering the temple, pull the lever to the northwest to raise a giant bridge which will serve as a shortcut back to the prison town church. You'll have to face off with a godskin noble in the temple. They will drop the godskin stitcher and noble presence incantation when defeated. After discovering the new site of grace, grab the serpent's amnion from the altar and then return to Raya. Give Raya the Serpent's Amnion and speak through the rest of her dialogue. Reload the game and Raya will have vanished. Speak to Tanith about Zorias' absence and then speak with her once more to get the tonic of forgetfulness. Return to the Temple of Eagle and use the lift to the south, then make your way deeper into Volcano Manor. As a preemptive warning, be careful not to give the tonic to Raya when we next see her. 
it will be the top slash first option, so it's easy to pick by accident. I use the Assassin's Gambit to sneak past the Iron Maiden here and avoid detection. Continue west through a door and up a staircase. Find the lift near the back of the next room and activate it. The lift can be used later as a shortcut to get back here from the Temple of Eagle. Continue forward and jump over the railing on the left side at the end of the short bridge. This will land you right next to the room where Raya is located. Double check to make sure that the Iron Maiden isn't following you, then go in and speak with Raya. She will ask you to put her out of her misery. You can oblige that request, give her the tonic of forgetfulness, or do nothing. The only option that leads to a hopeful ending for Raya's quest is to do nothing, so that's what I did. That is also the only option that results in obtaining Zoraeus's letter. Another note worth mentioning is that the tonic of forgetfulness can be given to Corin later on, although it has an almost negligible effect. In any case, you don't have to make that choice at this juncture. If you do nothing for now, then you will have one more chance to give Raya the tonic of forgetfulness later, after defeating Rikard. However, that will have to wait until after we go to the mountaintops of the giants to eliminate the third volcano manor target, Juno Hoslow. For now, we'll continue through the manor towards a fog wall that requires two stone sword keys to open. A seabed curse will be located on the other side. After opening the path with the stone sword keys, make your way down to the bottom floor. This is another area where the Assassin's Gambit skill comes in handy, as it will prevent detection by an enemy spellcaster that would otherwise make your life harder. Once at the bottom, head to the southwest to find a seabed curse. It will be the third or fourth one, depending on whether you got one from Blackguard Bogart. A total of five are needed to complete Dung Eater's quest. At the opposite side of this area, you'll find the Royal Knight's Resolve Ash of War, along with a direct exit back into the main hub area of Volcano Manor. We'll come back to finish the Volcano Manor saga in due time. For now, fast travel to the Erdtree Gazing Hill. You'll find Millicent up on the hill to the northeast. Give her the Valkyrie's prosthesis, then speak through the rest of her dialogue. At this point, you can return to Gowrie for new dialogue about Millicent. You will also be able to purchase the Pest Threads Incantation, and doing so will open up a new dialogue option about Melania, which will then unlock the Desperate Prayer Gesture. Next, make your way to Windmill Village in North Altus Plateau. Near the high point of the village, you'll find a summoning sign for Millicent. Equipped with a new prosthesis, she will help in the fight against a godskin apostle just a short distance further up the hill. This boss will drop the Scouring Black Flames incantation and godskin peeler when defeated. Discover and rest at the new site of Grace, then find and speak with Millicent nearby. Be sure to go through all of her dialogue before leaving. We will next find Millicent in the mountaintops, for now, Make your way over to the Hermit Merchant's Shack, located in the outskirts of Langdell. Discover and rest at the Site of Grace, pass time until nightfall, then get up and rest at the Site of Grace again. This should cause the merchant to disappear. When you approach the shack, the bell-bearing hunter will appear and begin attacking. This is the hardest version of the hunter yet, but again, it shouldn't be unfairly difficult at this point. If he is not appearing, you may need to speak with the merchant first and perhaps purchase an item from him. The hunter drops the Medicine Peddler's Bell Bearing at this location. Moving on, the entire surface level of Langdell Royal Capital will become unavailable after defeating Malaketh the Black Blade, which won't be for a good while. In any case, we're going to cover all of the unique items that can be obtained in the Royal Capital. We'll begin at the East Capital Ramparts. First, pick up a Perfume Bottle and a Seedbed Curse, 
Both are in the upper floor of the building just past the first lift. Along the way is probably the easiest large oracle envoy enemy to farm for the envoy's longhorn weapon. It has a low drop rate at a base of just 4%. You can also find the same enemy type at Mikola's Halleck Tree, although in less convenient locations. This large oracle envoy won't spawn in Langdell after defeating Malekith the Black Blade in the crumbling Faramazula, which can be said for almost everything in the royal capital. We already got this seedbed curse in part 3 of this series, so don't be surprised if it isn't there for you. Next, fast travel to the Avenue Balcony Site of Grace. From there, double back to the southeast, then head northeast down the avenue. Once at the end of the avenue, turn to the south and run to the end of the alley where you'll find the corpse variant of the imp head armor. Turn back towards the avenue and cross over to the other side, passing a fountain before descending to a lower area on a second lift. Sprint jump across the rooftops to the west and pick the black bow up from a body. Jump off and head through the archway to the west. You'll find a cracked pot to your left as you enter. Continue along the path to reach the lower capital church site of grace. On the bed nearby, you'll find Lionel's armor set along with a death bed dress. The omen killer outside the church will drop the omen smirk mask when defeated. Drop down the ladder to the north and make your way northeast down the channel. Defeat the sitting gargoyle at the end, then drop down into the pit below where an earth steel dagger can be found. Climb the ladder on the far side of the pit and make your way south to a secluded area with a treasure scarab. It will drop the thunderbolt ash of war when defeated. Again, you may have already gotten it during part 3 of this guide series. A gargoyle mini boss is located to the south of the west capital ramparts. When defeated, it will drop the gargoyle's halberd. Find the staircase back near the entrance to the west ramparts, turn right at the bottom to find a small secluded room where the cane sword can be found. From there, we'll make our way to the fortified manor, which has a striking resemblance to the round table hold. First, we'll head around the south side to gain entry into the upper level, where several unique items can be found in the first couple of rooms. This includes the Sanctified Whetstone, Hammer, and the By My Sword Gesture. Open the room where you'd find the two fingers where this round table hold, in their place will be the coated sword. Q 
Keep heading through the manor to the spot where you'd expect to find the dung eater. Instead, you'll find another seedbed curse. Double back to the smithing room and go down the staircase. Make a sharp left turn and move west through the hall to find the Two Fingers prayer book near a fireplace. Then head out into the foyer. You should find a red summoning sign on the ground as part of Bernal's Volcano Manor request. Ignore the summoning sign for now and move towards the west corner of the room, picking up Alberich's armor set along the way. The flightless bird painting is near the fortified manor site of Grace. The scene it depicts can be viewed from the peak to the south of the Windmill Heights site of Grace. When you go to that location, you'll get the Fire's Deadly Sin incantation as a reward. Head back out to the foyer and initiate the invasion at the Red Summoning Sign. You'll need to assist Bernal in defeating two NPCs, Vargram and Wilhelm. The Raging Wolf armor set is awarded immediately after victory, and you can speak with Bernal back at Volcano Manor to get the Gelmir's Fury Sorcery. Out of the main foyer exit and to the northwest, you'll find a particularly stubborn pair of Landell Knights. The one on the ground, wielding a spear and shield, will drop the Gravelstone seal when defeated, which boosts the potency of Dragon Colt incantations. Return to the foyer at the fortified manor and open the doors in the north corner, which leads out to the courtyard. You'll find a single Stormhawk axe against the south wall protected by an Iron Maiden. Grab it and then make your way west where a large lift will take you to safety. You may recognize this area as where the transporter trap chest at the Tower of Return in Weeping Peninsula takes you, and you'd be right. Past the Site of Grace, you'll find a dormant golem that will wake when approached, unless you are using the Assassin's Gambit Ash of War, and sneaking might work too. On the north side, you'll find a chest containing the Blessed Dude Talisman, and on the south side, you'll find a transporter that will take you to the isolated Divine Tower. This is the tower where Melania's Great Ruin is activated. However, for now we'll return to Landell, specifically the West Capital Ramparts. Climb up the giant vines to the southwest to reach the Erd Tree Sanctuary, where the Golden Shade form of Godfrey, First Elden Lord, will need to be fought. On a new game, defeating this boss will unlock an additional slot for equipping talismans. Afterwards, discover the new site of Grace, then head out the east exit and climb the vines to the upper level. Move out the north exit and turn left, dropping down to a rooftop before heading through a broken window. The Urtree Bow can be found in a chest on the west side of this room. To the south, you'll find a ladder that can be kicked down to make a somewhat useless shortcut, along with a Celestial Dew. Double back towards the broken window and climb up a new vine to reach the Golden Order Principia Prayer Book, which is required as part of Corin and Goldmask's quest. Before moving on, we'll quickly make our way over to the Queen's Bedchamber, where the Blessing of the Earth Tree incantation can be obtained. The Black Knife Assassin outside only drops runes when defeated.
After getting that, return to Earth Tree Sanctuary. Head out the south exit on the lower floor and climb down the vines that initially led you to the sanctuary. Go southwest at the bottom and make your way up the hill leading to the Landell Coliseum. There are two duelist type enemies along the path. Both can drop pieces of the duelist armor set. In addition, the first one also has a chance of dropping the duelist great axe, whereas the second duelist also has a chance of dropping the battle hammer. The drop rates are quite low, and unfortunately, these are the only two duelists that can be farmed for these items. And like most other things in Langdell, they will no longer be available after defeating Maliketh and Fair Missoula. Near the second duelist, you'll find the Ritual Shield Talisman, which is quite good. Heading clockwise around the Colosseum, you'll arrive at Corin and Goldmask's Langdell location. They will be looking towards the Urtree Sanctuary. Before speaking with either NPC, pick up the Starfist weapon from a body in the nearby alcove. While Corin isn't required for the completion of Goldmask's quest, it is ideal for both NPCs to be alive. This step in Goldmask's quest must be done before burning the Urtree at the Forge of the Giants. Go ahead and give Corin the Golden Order Principia, then learn the Law of Regression Incantation. Casting this incantation will be required for Goldmask's quest. If Corin is dead in your game, you can always give the Golden Order Principia to Muriel at the Church of Vows to gain access to that important incantation. Also, take note of the intelligence requirement to cast Law of Regression, it's 37. Rebirth may be required to meet that intelligence requirement, and it was for me. Return to Urtry Sanctuary, memorize the Law of Regression incantation, and equip your favorite seal. Then head out the west exit and down the lift that follows. Near the foot of the next staircase, you'll find a message on the ground in front of a statue of Radagon. You need to use the Law of Regression incantation, then read the new message that appears on the ground a short distance ahead. This is the important step for Goldmask's quest, but before we go back to speak with Goldmask, there are two other items we'll want to get near this location. The first is the Barrier of Gold spell. The gold footsteps of an invisible treasure scarab will appear as you run along the path to the north. It will skitter off past a crucible knight. The knight drops nothing more than runes, and if you are evasive enough, you can avoid its attacks and defeat the treasure scarab to get the spell. Following that, sprint jump over the railing to the northwest near the giant spear, and land on the platform below. Carefully ascend the spear to get the Bolt of Gransax, which is one of the legendary armaments. You can drop down on the pavilion below to get a Stone Sword Key, then make your way through a water channel to the northwest, which will take you to a ladder that can be kicked down, ultimately leading back to the lower capital church. If you needed to undergo Rebirth to meet the Law of Regression Intelligence requirement, now would be a good time to undergo Rebirth again, to invest your attribute points back to where you had them prior to the initial Rebirth. Afterwards, you can return to Goldmask and tell him your revelation, unlocking the Golden Order Totality Gesture and advancing Goldmask's quest. Also, if Corrin is present, he will thank you and sell two new incantations, Discus of Light, and Immutable Shield. Travel back to the Queen's bedchambers and make your way up to the Elden Throne to face off with Morgoth. You can summon Melina as an ally for this fight. After defeating the boss, attempt to enter the Urtree and then rest at a new site of grace that appears near Morgoth to gain the rolled medallion from Melina and advance the main questline. Nefeli's quest can finally be completed after defeating Morgoth. Return to Fort Height and clear it of demi-humans, then find Kenneth Height near the top of the fort. Speak through all of his dialogue, then fast travel to the Godric the Grafted Site of Grace. If Gestok is still kicking Godric's body and no one is in the throne room, make your way over to the secluded cell Site of Grace and rest at it. This should trigger Nefeli, Gestok, and Kenneth Height to all move into the throne room. Speaking with Nefeli multiple times will get you an Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone. 
and a second stone can be purchased from Gestalk for 20,000 runes. If you speak with Kenneth Height, his dialogue suggests that there is more content planned for him in future updates or expansions to the game. Next, return to Langdell and open the large set of doors at the northeast end of the main avenue. This leads to a series of lifts that will take you to the Forbidden Lands, which then leads to the Grand Lift of Rold and the mountaintops of the Giants. Before that though, head along the lower area near the water. At the southeast edge, you'll find another perfume bottle guarded by a misbegotten warrior. Afterwards, double back and make your way up the first lift. You'll then need to cross a large and time-consuming bridge to reach a second, larger lift. Along the way, you can pick up a Flame Drake Talisman plus one. At the end of the bridge, you'll find the second lift along with an exit to the southeast that leads to a boss fight and the Divine Tower of East Altus, where Morgoth's Great Ruin is activated. Before doing any of that, take the lift down to the Forbidden Lands and discover the Site of Grace. If you take the lift back up towards Langdell and jump off towards an alcove to the west shortly after the lift begins ascending, you'll get to a secret room where the Blade of Calling can be found. Afterwards, travel northeast through the Forbidden Lands to reach the Grand Lift of Rold. From there, it's a short distance to the Zammer Ruins where you'll find Yura, now possessed by the one known as Shabriri. Speak with Shabriri to learn more about the Three Fingers and the Frenzied Flame. If you inherit the Frenzied Flame, Shabriri will vanish, leaving behind the Ronin's armor set and iron kasa that Yura normally wears. You can also get the armor by just attacking Shabriri. However, I am not 100% sure if attacking Shabriri has any ramifications, but as far as I can tell, it does not. We will discuss Shabriri and the Frenzied Flame in Part 6 of this series. Until then, try to hold off on attacking him. For now, continue heading north, eventually reaching the ancient Snow Valley Ruins. Millicent will be nearby. Speak through all of her dialogue, and when you reload the game, Millicent will be gone. Next, go northeast to reach the Frozen River, then travel down it to the southwest. A red summoning sign will appear near the Shack of the Lofty. Pause for a moment after invading to unlock the Hoslo's Oath gesture. For defeating Gino Hoslo, you'll get the Hoslo's Armor Set along with the Hoslo's Petal Whip. With that done, go to Volcano Manor. Speak with Bernal to get the Gelmir's Fury Sorcery if you haven't already, then report your success to Tanith to get the Taker's Cameo Talisman. Afterwards, accept Tanith's offer to be transported to the final boss of Volcano Manor. Discover the Site of Grace, then pass through the Fog Wall. There is a weapon to your left as you enter the arena, the Serpent Hunter. It is the single best weapon for fighting this boss, and if you want, you can also fast travel to Roundtable Hold after grabbing it and upgrade it, then return to face off with the God Devouring Serpent, aka Rykard. Defeating this boss will get you the Remembrance of the Blasphemous, along with Rykard's Great Rune. Discover the new Site of Grace, then return to the Volcano Manor Hub and speak with Tanith, Bernal, and Patches. Also speak with Dialos if he's still there. You can also pick up the My Thanks gesture from where the Ghost NPC was previously located. Reload the game to confirm that all of them have left. Next, travel to the Temple of Igle, then return to Raya using the shortcut to cut down on travel time. Now is your final chance to give Raya the Tonic of Forgetfulness. Again, I think the best ending is to actually not do anything. Just speak to Raya and refuse to give her the Tonic. Reload the game and she will be gone, leaving behind the Datacar's Woe Talisman and Zarias's letter. I'll briefly show it on screen for anyone that wants to see, but look away if you don't want spoilers. If you do give Raya the Tonic of Forgetfulness, you'll need to find and speak with her at the main hub area of Volcano Manor and then reload the game. She will disappear and leave behind the Datacar's Woe Talisman, but nothing else. Next, fast travel to the Castellan's Hall in the Shaded Castle. Patches will be found sat down in the bridgeway. Speak through all of his dialogue to get the Dancer's Castanet's key item. Speak with him once more, then reload the game to confirm that he has left.
return to the Rikard boss room to find Tanith. You can give her the dancer's castanets, but at least for now, it will not have any observable effect. I am almost positive this means that From Software has future content planned for Tanith. Because of that, I would avoid attacking Tanith even though doing so will get you the consort's mask. I also think that attacking her might interfere with any future content planned for patches. That being said, if you are about to go to New Game Plus, you might as well get the mask from her before doing it. For now, leave her be and return to Murkwater Cave where we first met Patches. After a moment of deja vu, Patches will recognize you and promptly surrender. This will unlock the Patches crouch gesture and give you permanent access to Patches item shop. If this event isn't happening, try restarting the game to fix it. That's pretty much it for Volcano Manor related quests. We will wrap things up with Bernal a bit later once we get to the crumbling fair in Missoula. If you're still having trouble with the quests covered in this video, you can reach out in the comment section where I will do my best to help. I also recommend checking the comment I have pinned as I'll be updating it with information about specific problems people are having and potential solutions. You'll want to hold off on defeating either the Fire Giant or Mog Lord of Blood. I wanted to complete and discuss both Fia's and Hiatus quests in this video, but it will have to wait for part 6. You can find that video over on my channel, and if you're new, consider subscribing. You're helping me feed my cat, her name's Marshmallow. Another great way to support the channel is through the Marshmallow merch store. It features professional Elden Ring inspired artwork of your favorite fluffball. Have a great day, if you're here today, have a great Friday, and a great weekend, and as always, thanks for watching.